Welcome back. So in the last story, we talked about fish, remember? And the world is like like a sea or lake. And uh, and so, and then he, he has made all these people, you know, here's all these people here that Jesus made. You know, let's just dump the whole thing out right here. Um, all these people, uh, this is like all kinds of people. See the goldfish in here, though they're no longer just gold. There's there's different colors and there's different uh, ethnic races and different people from different nations. There's young and old and all in between. So all these, uh, so he has this and he's going to throw in a net and the net is going to collect at the end of time. He's going to collect them and bring them to shore. He's going to uh, separate the ones uh, from all the various nations, the ones that were good, okay, from the ones that were bad. I mean, he's going to separate the good and bad. And so I, I, I wanted to remind you of that. And I hope you're the good fish. The Most of them are bad. Most fish uh, in the world, most people um, are useless. And Jesus said they're going to be thrown away. Think about that. Just tossed. And God doesn't want to do that. He wants everybody. But he decided to, uh, you know, give us a chance to make a choice. And so I hope you choose Jesus. I have. Um, the, then what happened is he ended the parables at that point. That's not the only time he spoke those parables. He spoke them throughout his ministry. He sp spoke these wonderful stories, like, like we were just talking about the good and bad fish. And then he said, do you understand everything? All these things that I said, they said, yes, Lord. And so, um, and you know, did they totally understand everything? No, not yet. <laughs> like I don't either, but they understood some of the stuff, some of the points and, and they, and they later wrote it down. So they remembered it. And, but there's layers here and the disciples uh, at that time, these men were starting to grasp understand some of the stuff just like you might be starting to understand some of the stuff stay at it they did too jesus said in john 8 he said if you continue in my word then you're my followers indeed don't quit never 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 quit keep going don't give up and so um he says if you understood all these things they said yes and and he said unto them therefore this way he said be, well then you know Every scribe, which is a teacher of the law at that time, scribes did more than just teach, but some of them were teachers, you know, these scribes. Um, of these people who were Jewish scribes, and now he could be talking to Christian scribes too, the Christian teachers. Every teacher of the law who has been instructed about the kingdom of heaven, like he's learned and like they're learning. And so therefore you guys are like these scribes and you're going to go share it. And you're going to go share too. If you're a Christian, you're expected to be sort of, a, in a sense, a teacher of other people. Every Christian should be teaching somebody about Jesus. He said, therefore, every teacher of the law has been who has been instructed about the kingdom of heaven is like a, a, a house, a, a master of a house, an owner of a house, a householder, a person who owns a house. And it says, it, it, the, the person is like, the kingdom of heaven is like someone who owns a house. Who brings out of his storeroom, his storage, new treasures, as well as old. So there's, what he's saying, I believe, is that a Christian um, who is walking with God, is who's walking in the kingdom, is going to bring out truths of old and truths of new. Old Testament, New Testament. Uh, um, uh, things that God's taught them, mysteries that they didn't see before, they're going to bring it out. And so I've been teaching some stuff, by the way, for as of this t taping here, as this videotaping, I'm 43 years old, old in the Lord. I've been teaching stuff that I taught first year I started learning about Jesus. So it's like this Bible right here. This book right here, this is a very old Bible. The year is... Um, 1828 <laughs> that's how old this book is this is absolutely a treasure this is so awesome something dropped out of it just in maybe a page uh but anyway oh it's a piece of paper here 
look at this. This is a this is a, a cool old book. This is an old Bible, 1828, like way over 100 years ago. Uh, this has been written, or not way over, but it's about 100 years. Yeah. So this is so beautiful. Wait a minute, it is way over. What am I saying? It's 200 years old, almost 200 years. I don't do math very well. So look at this. Isn't this great? This is the actual Holy Bible. I can't, I don't know if you can see that right there. It says Holy Bible, but look at the, look at, look at the old. And this is how they made them is like this. I've seen pictures, by the way, like of a guy named George Whitfield, for example, and he, he was holding up a book like this and it was the same look at this book, uh, uh, this Bible, how they did it. Now look how this is different. See, this is a newer, this is a newer Bible right here. It looks nice, doesn't it? It's definitely really well. Both of these are valuable. Both of these are import, as important as each other. Both of these have the truth in it. So it's bringing out old as well as new. So whatever you're learning now, never let it become old like you, you, it's useless and you don't want to use it anymore. Whatever truths, whatever parables you're learning and all that, store it into you. Just like a man who stores his stuff. I tend to be sometimes like a, um, how do you, I hoard things. I, I collect things. I, you know, certain things that uh, I really want to keep. And sometimes I end up using them again. And so, but the word of God, the truths, the mysteries of the kingdom, the things that you're learning now, s store them into your heart. It reminds me of Mary uh, and Luke 1 will study her life a little bit and how she kept these things in her heart. She's pondered these things, things that were happening. And she remembered them. By the way, I think Paul, Luke, who wrote that, is actually saying um, she pondered them in her heart. And that's why he got the information from her, because there's some things only her, only she would have known. And he got that information from her because I believe he interviewed her. And that's why he mentioned that. But she remembered like details. Don't you remember things in your life? really significant things. Everything that Jesus said and did was so significant, it stuck to their minds and their memories. Um, but anyway, the point is old and new. Um, the kingdom of heaven is like a man, a householder who uh, brings out, he brings out old and new truths and, and all. And that's what the kingdom of heaven is like. And so I think maybe what he's saying to the disciples is that you guys are going to take these things that I'm teaching you and you're going to bring them out later. And that's what they did. They wrote some of them. And I don't know if they wrote everything that Jesus said because the books wouldn't, the world wouldn't have been able to contain almost the books that, that were written about it. John said that in John 21, very end here, near the end. And so this is so, uh, so very good. And so I would encourage you to know the parables. And that's the end of those parables. And that could be the eighth parable. There were seven parables that he said um, ahead of it, and they were kind of lengthy. No, not all of them. They were short, but he said, do you understand all these things? It seems like that was the end of the parables when he spoke those in the end of those. And they said, yes. And then he adds this other thing that we could count as a parable, you know, too. Uh, but anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. I enjoyed talking about it. I love talking about Jesus. Do you? I hope so.